Well, Mr. President, uh, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, I'm uh, assigned by Stan uh, the task of talking about a part of the world that has scarcely been mentioned this morning. It's a part of the world which uh, is of increasing importance and which in the years to come is going to be perhaps at the forefront of discussions as distinct from the back end of discussions. And I talk about the developing world. The developing world, uh, in rough terms, amounts to five and a half billion people on a planet of six and a half billion. There are about a billion people in the rich world as we know it, and there are five and a half billion in the developing world. And by 2050, not too far away, we expect our world to have grown from six and a half billion people to nine billion people. With the billion people in the rich world, maybe, maybe being a billion one, and the people in the developing world growing at that time uh, to eight, uh, trillion, uh, eight billion people. So you will have a world in which eight-ninths of the world, roughly, will be in the developing world, and we'll still have our billion plus in the rich world. The important thing that is happening is not just the growth in demographics. It is a complete change in the structure of the economics of our planet. <clears throat> so that discussions by our successors some years from now are likely to be when uh, President Perez is running his conference some 30 or 40 years from now, and uh, we look forward to that possibility. <clears throat> um, we cannot imagine it without him. It's unlikely that you will have a group of Europeans and, a, and an Australian uh, who has come to live in the United States sitting here, but you will have a Chinese and an Indian and a Brazilian and maybe a Russian. And if we're lucky, you'll have someone representing uh, the group of speakers that is here this morning. And perhaps you will still have a chairman in Stan Fisher, who I hope will still be around uh, to, to chair the conference. <clears throat> but the important thing that you have to understand is that it is not just the number of people that is changing, it is the balance that most of the people in this room, and certainly on our panel, have grown up with. We have grown up, I think I can say, with a feeling that the rich countries, our one billion people out of, let's say, six billion at the turn of the century, that this one billion people was entitled to 80% of the income. And we all grew up with this. And I can tell you, as having worked in the World Bank, that I had to fight very hard at World Bank meetings and IMF meetings to get the attention of people like Axel and others on the developing world. I'm sure the minister, if she had been there, would have been much more sensitive from her remarks. But this, this, this is not surprising because for 30 years, from 1970 to the year 2000, the rich countries more or less had 80% of the global GDP. And in fact, the G7 had 65% of the global GDP, and it varied by two or 3% a year, but always around that level. What is happening today is that that 80% that we talked about is being eroded. And we're seeing a shift to these developing countries. And to give you an idea of that shift, it's dropped from 80 to something around 70 or a little bit more. And the projections are that by 2025, that will drop again from 65 to maybe 45 to 50. And by 2050, you will have again what we last had in the year 1500 and the year 1820, China and India being 50% of the global GDP. 50% of the global GDP. For people of my generation, that's extremely difficult to contemplate, to understand. And maybe the projections are wrong. Maybe it's not 50%, maybe it's 45%, or it's 42%. 
or it's 10 years later. The truth of the matter is that the whole dynamics are dynamics of a move to the world of development. And we have to have a change of understanding. And for many years, Israel was extraordinarily active in development, and very sadly, in my judgment, they have reduced the amount of financial involvement in the developing world, and hopefully will restore it because they have a lot of the technology, the skills, and the understanding that were so important and are so important uh, to sectors of the world that are in poverty. And let me give you one other statistic. The other statistic that you should understand is that Africa and the poorest countries, which now more or less are a billion people out of the six and a half in terms of people that live under a dollar a day or a dollar and a quarter a day in terms of income. This group will grow in Africa and some smaller countries or some lesser countries but important in Asia. They will constitute 25% of the world's population, 25%. So it'll be around 2.3 billion people. And the numbers, very roughly, and there are many, many estimates of this, but to give you a sense of it, today that group of people has an average per capita income of seven or $800 a year. By 2050, the estimates are that it'll be anywhere between $1,700 a year and $3,000 a year. Let's take the highest estimate, $3,000. At the same time, in 2050, the estimates are that China and India, China and India, will not be at $3,000, but will be at $40,000 per capita. The two-thirds of the world's middle class will be in China and India two-thirds of the world's middle class will be in China and India. Above that will be a group of countries, including some oil producers in this part of the world, which will be maybe $50,000 per capita. And then the rich countries that many of us represent will be on those same estimates $100,000 per capita. So you have a gap in the world of 100,000 to a billion rich people down to two and a half billion people that have, let's say, $3,000 per capita. 100,000, 3,000, with a quarter of the world around 3,000. Let's make it 4,000, make it 5,000. Reduce the 100,000 to 80,000. Reduce China and India from 40,000 to 30,000. The important point is that it is an unstable world. This is not a world of people in poverty running around carrying spears, not knowing what is going on in the rest of the world, hunting, trying to feed their kids, eking out some agricultural future. This is a group of people that have earpieces, that have cellular radios, that are well informed on what is going on in the world. And not surprisingly, subject to influences, all of which may not be positive. There are many influences that are trying to disrupt our planet. And so this issue of poverty is not just an issue for specialists, not just for people like me who could only get a job in the World Bank because I couldn't get a job in the central banks and, and had to eke out an existence in that field. It is for all of you. It's for our kids. It is the primary issue in terms of the future. This tectonic shift from the rich countries to the developing countries. This tectonic shift which is reflected in so many ways in terms of the environmental conference which is coming up in Copenhagen, which is reflected in the influence and the role of women, which is reflected in the influence and the role of education throughout the world, of healthcare, which have been touched upon. This is, for me, the central point that I have been allowed to make. And let me make one last point in the region. You have, in the region, 350 million Arabs. 
60% of that Arab community is under the age of 25. A hundred million are between the ages of 15 and 25. Hundred million. They need four to five million jobs a year. They are currently getting maybe two million jobs a year. They are being delayed in their opportunity to get work. They're becoming frustrated and that group is growing. It is crucially important that we take every effort that we can to get those young people employed. There is a role when President Perez has finished with the modest effort of peace, there is a tremendous role in which Israel can provide the technology, the know-how, the skills to the Arab world to get that group of young people more effective and more working. A group of young people that are unemployed is not a great thing to have in any country. It is a very difficult thing to have in this region. And so, as we look forward, I simply say to you, think of the changing balance, think of the move from Europe to Asia, which existed before, think of the role of young people, and think in terms of your neighbors of how hopefully with peace and better understanding, Israel can help. Thank you very much.